So sacrifice flies are a fairly common occurrence in a ball game, but there is a play that is a lot less common uh, involving sacrifice flies that they might make a, a pretty good trivia question for your friends, and that is how can a sacrifice fly take place but there are no outs on the play? So the batter gets credit for a sacrifice fly but there are no outs. And the reason is that this is uncommon is because, of course, when you, you think of a sacrifice fly, uh, you have your, your, your batter up and then he, with a runner on third base. And so then the, the batter hits a long fly ball out, say, to the right fielder. The right fielder catches the ball, and as soon as he does that, the runner on third base tags up, runs home, and scores the base. And so that, of course, would be uh, an out and a sacrifice fly with the run scoring. And that's that's important to remember for a sacrifice fly too. The the, the run uh, there must be a run scored on the play. Um, if a runner just goes uh, and tags up from second and runs to third, that's not a sacrifice fly. That's simply a, a, a pop out, and he's the runner is tagging up. So how can we have a sack fly without that outfielder catching the ball? And that is through kind of the second part of the rule about sacrifice flies. And so our standard uh, definition of a sack fly has to be less than two outs. Uh, the batter hits a fly ball handled by the outfielder or an infielder running in the outfield. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's fair or foul territory. Uh, again, that fielder catches the ball and then the runner tags up from third base, runs home and scores. So that's the main definition. But the second part is that if the ball is dropped and the runner scores, if in the scorer's judgment the run could have scored after the catch had that catch been made. So basically what we're saying here is that we have our, our batter, we have a runner on third base, we have our, our outfielder out here, whoops, be on the outfielder be on the other team. So we have our long fly ball hit out here uh, to right field and the right fielder gets under it like he's going to catch it and this is going to be a typical sacrifice fly play only for whatever reason he does not catch the ball he drops the ball just makes an error on it and so then the runners of course they are free to run because the ball has not been caught so so they don't even have to tag up they can run uh, they can run home and so then what this rule is saying is that this play would still be scored a sacrifice fly and an error so it would be it would be that this runner is advancing to first base on say a sack fly and then E9 or whoever, whichever the, the fielder is that, that mess the play up. And so what that's going to do, kind of why that is there, is that if you just called it an error, that would then kind of decrease from the stats of the, the batter. So he would be 0 for 1 if this was his first at bat. And it's really not his fault because he, he did hit the ball deep enough to have a sacrifice fly. So um, I don't know if he would be too disappointed because obviously he's getting on base and the run is scoring. Um, but the rules are saying, hey, he, he did have enough for a sacrifice fly so we aren't going to make him over one he would just that would sack flies of course do not count as at bats so he would be o for o so the thing really here that the score that where the judgment call is made is that where that ball is caught so if the the outfielder or, or if it's an infielder and he is uh, really close so if, if, if the, the play is made or the, the ball is caught in here closer to the infield or closer to second base, and I would think even more so if it was made on this side of the field, um, then the, the score could say, hey, that, that ball was not deep enough um, to, have, to have scored him. 
and so then it would just uh, if it, it's caught it would just be the pop-up then uh, but if the ball is deep you know if it's on the warning track obviously that that score would probably give the, the runner the benefit of the doubt that he w the, the runner would have been able to score uh, so the batter would then get credit for that sack fly but then obviously where it becomes kind of a gray area is whenever you get uh, into medium depth uh, so it's really the scores call you might have to um, take into account how fast is the runner uh, things like that that would he have been able to score had that ball been caught so while we're kind of on this topic of unusual sacrifice fly plays uh, the rules make one more comment about this situation occurring and so that kind of second part of the rule is that if this situation were to occur where the ball is the ball is dropped then the official score shall score a sacrifice fly even if another runner is forced out because the batter has become a runner so what does that all mean so this is saying that that if we have a situation here so typically if we have a runner on first base it doesn't matter what the the other runners are and this this uh, the batter would would hit a line drive into the outfield line drive base hit uh, no, no problem gets through the infield and for whatever reason this runner is really slow or maybe he trips and he falls down and the outfielder is able to run up catch or, or he wouldn't be catching the ball this would be a ground ball he would get to the ball and he would be able to throw that ball into second so that to to force the this runner out so this runner who was on, started the play on first base was forced out at second base so he is out just because it was a line drive into center field doesn't mean that that is a base hit for the batter that would actually be scored a fielder's choice it's just like if the shortstop would have picked the ball and flipped it to the second baseman to force the runner out um, it's th the same thing if the center fielder or another outfielder picks the ball up and forces that runner out at second base it's still a fielder's choice for the batter and so that's what this uh, play or this rule is saying that even if this happens and the runner is forced out it's still considered a sacrifice fly for the batter and so in this play we would probably have runners uh, on the corners the ball would be hit out to the outfield everybody's thinking he's going to catch it and at the last second he misses it the right fielder misses the ball it falls to the ground this runner runs home obviously to score that run uh, and it you, you can kind of understand why this play would have happened because if this right fielder is kind of camped under the ball this runner on first base is probably going to assume he's going to catch it so he's not going to get too far off the base and then obviously this right fielder is going to pick the ball up and throw it back in to get the out at second base and to force this runner uh, but because of this part of the rule we're saying that it is still scored a sacrifice fly uh, on the part of the batter so again this is going to be a, a sack fly and then probably an error on the right fielder um, for him there he will get credit for the RBI and then this this the runner who was on first base would simply be put out uh, through 9-6 maybe this is the shortstop covering second base and so that would be the out on the play there although that of course is just the second part of the rule after all this this video is about sacrifice fly without an out and that right there is how you can uh, have that sacrifice fly without an out occurring on the play.